hello guys welcome to my youtube channel please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe today i'll be talking about how to use next.js to run migrations in a node application you can see my next configuration file that has all my db details and then it contains all configuration details for each environment the db details for each environment I have Next installed already, but then the instruction to install Next is in the description below. So first of all, you need to add Next to your package.json and bookshelf also to your package.json and then you run npm install. So this will install Next in your project. After that, you need to run Next init. Next init. As you can see, mine threw an error because I already have the configuration file, which is nextfile.js. So what next you need to do is to create this configuration file for you, which you would now edit and um, put in your DB details. I'm putting your DB details for different environments, for the different environments. So I am working on the development environment. As you can see, my details is important from my config file where i have my sql client and then my connection details so basically you don't have to use sql you can use any kind of db so just follow the documentation for that but in this tutorial i use X sql so next to create a migration file you run next migrate colon make create test table so when you hit enter this is going to create the corresponding configuration file for you in the migrations folder in the migrations folder so let's go and look for the file that was created newly you can see that it's created a new file create underscore test underscore table and inside the file you can see two functions. So I just want to go and grab a schema from a previous table that I created. Oh, sorry about that. Sorry about that. Okay. So let's just copy this. Let's just copy this and yes, paste in our new migration file. So you can see that there are two functions here. One is to create the table or add anything new to the table and the second one is what you want to happen when you roll back the migration as you can see the name of my table is tests so i'm creating a table test in the db and you can see so the first um line here on line four is to create my id my id column which is my primary key it's going to be auto increment and then you can see first name, which is a string, and it is not nullable. Last name is a string. It is not nullable. You can see column email, which is a string. It is unique, and it is not nullable. So you can check their official documentation the link in the link below to look for um, the syntax for your own kind of schema. So if you want to specify foreign keys, to um, a different table as you can see here the country id is a foreign key for the country table so this is how you specify foreign keys in next using next.js in node and you can see table.timestamps this will generate your timestamps for you updated at and um, created at <clears throat> now the second method exports dot down this is where you put the code that you want the my next to run when you roll back this particular migration file so in my case here i want it to 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 drop this table so you can see next.schema.drop table if exist test so what we are going to do now is to run this migration so it can create the table for us in the db so i'm just going to run the command next migrate column latest so this is going to run just the migration files that were created newly 
So while we wait, you see, um, the migration file has been, yeah, so it ran the migration for us and then it has created the table. So now let's go to our DB. We can see the table there, test, table test. Oh, sorry, let's ignore that. Now let's look at the structure of our table. We can see that our columns were well created. We see the ID, which is uh, auto increment. You can see the ID, which is auto increment, and it's a primary key. You can see the first name, which is VACA255, which is a string. Last name, username, VACA255, which is a string. Then you can see the email. You can see the email. Uh, the email, you see that it is VACA255, and then it is unique. You can see the unique constraint that we added in the schema is right there. It is unique. And then you can see our timestamps down here, created at updated hat. Now, remember we um, created some foreign key constraints, the country ID, state ID, status ID, that are meant to link to other tables. So let us look at it. You can see that the foreign key constraints were created normally. They were created normally. So you see that country ID is leading to the ID of the country stable. So I already have the country stable. I have the state stable and the status table. So you see that it is linking to each of these tables correctly. So I hope um, this video was useful to you. Uh, please hit the like button and then subscribe. Uh, thank you very much for watching. See you in my next video. Thank you.